What's up? We are back on Malachi because I hate myself. I'm wearing the Shadow the Hedgehog hoodie because he is my strength. And I thought it might be fun to finish the rest of everybody's houses that I've been meaning to get around to. I know I have like so much to do on Mothman, my other island, which I am currently building. Like I'm currently making the whole thing. It's like not anywhere close to done yet. I have so much to do over there and it's coming along. It's a horror island. It's like a horror movie island. Why are you always reading? You little shit. I love you so much. Like I love, like she's just doing this like all the time, all day, every day. She just cannot stop reading in like the most like picturesque situations. I swear to God, I have like 17 pictures of her just from the last week doing this. It's starting to feel like an orchestrated like attack. Look at her. Oh, I'm scared. I feel like she's looking through the camera at me, at me, not at my character, but at me. Okay, Lily. Okay, Lily. Have so much to do over there. It's not even funny. And I am going to get to that. Don't worry. But there's a lot going on here too, right? <sighs> A lot going on here. A lot going on here. A lot going on here. So I just wanted to spend more time on this island, quite frankly. Raymond, like a week on Molokai, and he's already like a fucking scene kid. He's already an emo legend. Look at him. Like now the glasses make sense, you know? I love what they've done here with the stone. Just think of the potential. I'm a dancer and this is my canvas. What do you mean dancers don't use canvas? I'm a dancer painter, okay? Yeah, he's like just such a creative guy. For those of you not in the know too, cause I realized that this is a lot. I realized that a lot has happened in a short amount of time and that it's very, very jarring. Just the quick overview of the last fucking month of my life. Please give me attention. Please feel bad for me. Please take pity upon my soul. Um, on my birthday, Kyle was spotted with Shino. Shino, um, where do I, I mean, how do I even sum up what Shino did? She knew what she was doing. She orchestrated a very long con attack on my entire life. She dismantled everything I'd, I'd built here and she did it with a smile on her face. And so uh, me and Kyle, I mean, I left him, you know, we ended things because I can't take it anymore. <laughs> I just can't bear what uh, I saw him and Shino doing. So if you really want to know, I don't really, I'm not ready, I think, to, to reiterate like word for word in graphic detail what I saw that day, but it's in the video of, um, you'll know, you'll know when you see it. Um, it's labeled appropriately and it's a recent one. So go check it out. And then, um, you know, as you know, I have a buddy on this island that that takes care of problems for me. His name is Sherb. Sherby. Sherb took care of Sheena. Let's just say that. Sheena is no longer with us in many ways. And because I went nuts, because I lost my mind, I decided to bring in Raymond because why the fuck not? You know, this game's been out all this time and I've never had Raymond or even really seen the guy. So I figured, why not? You know, why the fuck not? I don't really know what I'm doing with Raymond. Right now, I am single and not ready to mingle. This is going to feel great. This is like so symbolic. You know, this is that was just very symbolic. Anyway, I'm like not looking for another relationship. I'm just like, you know, I just need, I need to fucking take some time, you know? So that's what I'm doing. I am just taking some time and there's nothing wrong with that. And in the meantime, I am going to, yeah, um, fix everybody's houses because no one knows what they're doing except for me. So I definitely want to do Sherb, definitely want to do Pierce. If I have time, Renee and Lily and Raymond. But yeah, I want to get some more of those done. So... That way I can be here and if anything happens, I can see it, you know, because shit's raw, shit's, shit's like new. I'm gonna dump Shino's ashes into the ocean, by the way. That's why I picked that up. Why are you just sitting there staring at Raymond's house? You confused is where your little girlfriend went? Hmm, she's going into the ocean, Kyle, that's where. Why don't you check the ocean in about five minutes? Yeah, that's what I thought, Kyle. <sighs> but I'm not ready to let him go. Not completely, I'm really, really not. So don't even ask, honestly, just like don't ask, please. I don't know if I'll ever be ready, I don't know. I don't know, okay? One day at a time, I'm taking it one day at a time. There you go, Raymond, this is what you get for now, because I just, you know, I just don't have the energy, quite frankly, to like fuck around with something that much. So that's what he gets. I think it looks fine, I think it looks great, actually. Oh, also speaking of this asshole, I'm um, taking his nephews from him. Um, I used to have like a very tumultuous relationship with Timmy and Tommy. 
the Nook Twins. But um, on Halloween, you know, seeing them in the same costume that they always wear every year, I realized that they are victims of this man, of this man's like regime. All they ever fucking do is work. They're little kids. They don't even have like, like Halloween costumes. They have like a yearly Halloween costume that Nook puts them in just to like soup up the store. I don't have any fucking money apparently. So can you just like give me a second, even though I'm richer than you, Tom Nook. Anyway, Tom Nook is an evil motherfucker. He like just is so bad to those poor little boys. And now that I'm a mom, I'm like a new mom, like in real life. And I just see everything differently now, honestly. I just see them as victims who need a mommy. So I love them so much and I'm nurturing and caring for them and bringing them food and shit. You know, whenever Tom Nook's distracted, I like close up the store so that they can have a fucking day off. And I just put money in the register to make it look like they were working. And I have like all the other residents in on it and shit, obviously. We're just like slowly but surely prying those poor little boys out of this horrible person's grasp. All right, let's start with Sherb. As much as I've always loved his interior design, it's time to lean into it. You know, he's, he's done hiding. After the Shino thing, there's no more hiding, honestly. I think it's finally time for Sherb to just like live his truth. He's been here since almost the beginning and everybody knows. It's it's an open secret that Sherb is the way that he is. Everybody knows. Nobody's gonna be surprised to walk into Sherb's place and see traumatic horrors beyond comprehension. It's time, it's really time. And I know we, we did his house in Happy Home Paradise, but you know, this is his home here and it's gonna be a little different, but you know, you know how Sherb is, you know what his hobbies are, what his personality is, I fucking hate. I hate that Tom Nook stands here, but you know what, Tom Nook? Go ahead and watch. Go ahead and watch this one and see exactly what you're up against, you know? So yeah, we're just, and you know what? I do wanna, again, lean into the whole, like he's cute, he's like a cute little baby, but he's also a very scary guy. So, and I have no ideas. I really don't. I'm winging it entirely. That's that's my life. That's my whole life. So, <laughs> hmm. Interesting. That's an interesting concept. That's fun too. This is, oh, hmm. That might be funny and fun. Ooh, isn't there like a tarp one? The tarp one would be awesome actually. Hmm. Or maybe not. I don't know. Hmm. The party flooring with like a scary wall might be fun. This is fun because it's like a drain for like all the blood. You know, maybe it's like a really, really gross like situation, but then it's dressed up with furniture. Gotta have the knives, gotta have the beautiful, beautiful knives. But then I want to put like really cute like, lights up here. Let's make them blue, like Sherby. Oh my God, this is sick. Sick in the head. Unbelievable, I kind of love it. Okay, it's coming along. It's really, really coming along. <laughs> I kind of love this, hold on. Remember how Sherb always liked to clean? Maybe we should put like a broom out. Or maybe not, oh, eh. Let's see, what does that look like? That's really fucking unhinged. Maybe we'll pull that out later. This fucking singular like hanging light bulb is so scary. Something about it, like it's just wrong. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just something wrong about it. I'm gonna like, where should I put his bed? Like in the middle or like on the side? Like maybe like the, maybe it should be over here. And it's like a scary baby bed or something, <laughs> you know? Like, it, like, I don't know. I don't know, we'll see. Let's put all his victims on the wall. It's a good idea. <sighs> she know? You know her, you know her, you love her, you mourn her. Let's just put this here, that's so funny. And then we'll put like Shino somewhere else. Let's say he killed like Lyman. Let's just say he killed Lyman, like just for, just like because I don't care about him, about his life. <laughs> like that is just like, like straight up a kid's bed, which is like hilarious, you know? I love that, that's like so cute actually. I'm just like pulling out a bunch of shit that I may or may not use to see what it looks like. Um, also, just so we're crystal fucking clear, this is okay to do because Sherb isn't real and Cody isn't real. They He is a blue bear and Sherb is a blue goat. However, and you know what I'm about to say, I think. Most of you hopefully know what I'm about to say. Don't let me fucking catch y'all doing this to recreate an actual fucking crime or a tragedy that took place in real life with real people ever. Don't let me catch you doing it because if I do, I will personally see to it that you never live it down. So yeah, this is okay to do because it's not only is it fictional, but it's like so fictional. It's like incredibly fictional. Like it's based on nothing that's ever happened. So yeah, don't fucking do it if it's real people. It seems like a pretty easy concept to wrap your mind around, but you'd be fucking surprised. You'd be really, really, really just blown away and so surprised that there are actually people out there, real people like you and me, who think that it's okay to recreate 
true, real crimes in Animal Crossing New Horizons. No matter how you try to justify it, it will never be okay, okay? So glad we had this talk. Thankfully, I know that all of you have a brain in your head, so I know that it's not a concern. But, you know, I figured I'd just throw that out there in case there are some brainless folks in the audience tonight. I don't know if I'll keep this, but I think what I'm going to try to do is, like, replace this picture. This used to be, like, Marina's little, like, painting, like, thing. I'm going to replace it with, like, a scary, like, little kid picture. You know how, like, when, like, in, in movies, like, I'm going to try to make, like, a scary little kid picture, you know, of, like... You know, you know what I'm talking about. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I fucking never liked this bitch, so we'll put her up on the wall too. Why not? Never, never liked this bitch. Fucking Eloise. Hell yeah. Bye, bitch. Bye, girl. Sorry, Lyman. He really never did anything wrong to me. Maybe he did something to sure. I don't know. I fucking wish, honestly. Let's like manifest it. Sorry, Daisy. Like, let's just like, even if like he didn't necessarily kill them, let's just put like, let's put some of the old villagers' pictures on the walls just like, just for, just to be creepy, just to be bad and weird. Not Rooney though, but like definitely Blanche. Oh my God, I hate him. Yeah, so let's definitely put him on the wall. See, like some of them are like posters and like, there's like no rhyme or reason, you know? That's what makes it so scary. Dude, Gigi is so hot. She's just a babe. She's such a babe. Oh my God, Ward Jr. has to be on the wall. Of course, of course, of course. Yes. Yes, yes. Yep. He died. He's dead. Rip. Rip, rip, rip. Sure, Queenie. Sure. You can, yeah, you can go on the wall. Sure. Yep. Sure. You can go on Sherby's wall. Of course. I'm like literally just putting random pictures. Like, and it's like, are they dead? Who knows? Like, what does it mean that if your picture's on Sherb's wall? Who knows? But it can't be good. You know, it cannot be good. Clearly Digby's dead. Like he's got to be dead because like we just never see him. So I'll put him up there. I'm just kind of desperate for people at this point. So like, I can't believe Rooney's in the rain in his picture. That's like so dramatic. Ava, I don't really like you either, bitch. You're going on the wall. I kind of fucking love this. I think it's like perfect, honestly. I won't lie to you. I am obsessed actually. Maybe I'll put the couch over here. And you know how he's always like, oh, the bugs that live in my house. Like, so the bugs are there. That live in his house. You know? Oh, that's good. Yeah, that that's that works, I think, right? And that gives me more room for activities over here, you know? I think I'm gonna put Shino's picture like over on like it's gonna be kind of like displayed in a special way, I think. Cause it's like recent. Tom, now can I fucking help you, buddy? Why are you like in the middle of the fucking room? I think it's done. I think that this I just fucking ugh. <laughs> never mind. I have to go fucking get my rug back because I'm an idiot. All right, let's try that again. I think it's just about done. I was just gonna, I'm just gonna change this up a bit. Oh, can I do it now? Maybe I can do it right now. I'll see what I can do. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. I love that. Ah, oh, perfect. It's like, it's supposed to be Cody. I should have done more to make it look like Cody, but I didn't because I don't care. I love it. I think it's perfect, actually. What do you think, Tom Nook? He's like, <laughs> fucking what? All right, that's one done. A couple more to go. Let's see what's going on out here. Let's see if everybody's behaving before we go to the next day. How's everybody doing? How's it going? You guys getting along? Everybody behaving? Where is everybody? Hiding from me because everybody hates me? Wow, just like everybody, it's just like deserted town. Oh, there's Raymond. He looks really good in that sweater. Jinx, you owe me a, uh, I hate that word, ooh. Ugh. It's kind of scary. It kind of scares me, I won't lie, to you for some reason. And I'm not like, I know I'm like not like scared of the, the word oolong tea, but I just, that that word gives me very bad vibes, extremely. And I love oolong tea, actually. But it gives me really weird, scary, like, it's kind of like Dr. Seuss, but like, you know how some of the Dr. Seuss books made you feel uncomfortable a little? So for some reason, it like reminds me of that or something, or there, it reminds me of something. And I just, it makes me feel really uncomfortable. It gives me like extremely bad vibes oolong. I just don't really fucking like it. Ooh, it really feels spooky to see a spooky tower. Don't you just love the idea of dressing up as someone else for Halloween? I love it so much that I do it almost every day. What? You you dress up as someone else every day? Okay, that's really interesting. Aw, he's so cute. He's like over there sweeping because he killed someone recently. Oh, hey, uh, what's his name is here? Why is everybody getting along? That's great, actually, right? Oh my god. He just, <laughs> he just turned on I'm like, Ugh. that was kind of scary. I've never seen them that, I've never seen a villager turn on the fucking chainsaw. Of course it was Sherb. Of course it was Sherb. That was actually beautiful. Thank you for giving us that little tidbit, Sherb. I really appreciate it. 
Hopefully tomorrow's a little bit more unhinged. Favorite cousin. Oh, I think that's like one of the only things I need left for the museum. This better be real. How do you know this is real? I gotta look it up. Hell yeah, this is a real one. I just looked it up. I think this is like all I need. This is great. This is just great. Thanks, Red. Thanks a lot. How does he even steal all this shit? How do you how do you get away with this? How the fuck do you like take? You can lift this. Are you telling me that you lift this up? Hey, thanks a bunch for pitching Tom Neck. The idea of remodeling my place, popcorn. A lot of folks get real weirded out if someone who didn't live in their house tried to remodel it. Not me, because I know you've got great taste. And let me tell you, I want my place to be extra tasty. Oh, sure be it will. You're going to be very happy with what mommy did to your place. Don't worry. Goose what? Okay, why is that my problem? I've been in a slump lately. I'm not getting the gains I want with my weight training, pretty girl. I was thinking maybe I could stop by your place for some inspiration. Goose. What? He's like obsessed with me all along. Like really? He's like really trying to swoop in. That's so fucking hilarious. It's a rich goose. Sure. <laughs> maybe Kyle will see us walking there. What are we waiting for? Let's get going, pretty girl. Goose, don't get any fucking ideas, though. Honestly, like, do not fucking get the wrong idea. Don't get it twisted, buddy. The only reason I'm inviting you in is because I'm really, really hoping that Kyle is watching. Yo, I'm coming in, pretty girl. I know, this is our plan. This is the plan. We, like, literally, like, walked here together. So now what? Oh, I almost forgot. I brought you a gift. Here you go. You fucking better of. Thank you. Thanks, thanks. Usually people bring me fruit. A conductor's cap. You literally heard me say, who gave this to me the other day? And I was like, that was very submissive of you. Was it Raymond? Yeah, and he heard that. And he was like, oh, she likes a conductor's cap? Good to know. He's like going after me. He really thinks that this is happening. <laughs> That's so funny. That's the kind of gift you like, right? What the fuck? Yeah, seriously. He like overheard that fucking weird. Like the equivalent of giving me a protein shake, pretty girl. Not really, Goose, to be honest. Hey, since I'm here, you want to play a game or something, pretty girl? All right, time for the greatest cards were ever invented. Hi, car please stop yelling. Your apron? Oh boy. I'm going to try really hard to win this. There, the first card is four. Okay. Uh I don't like want to do this, but I'm doing it for the drama, I guess. Whatever. This is the moment. Will it be the third? Okay, shut up. You nailed it. It's nine. Well, like I promised, here's your apron. You really think I want? Why are you clogging up my fucking storage with this trash? Wow, that really pumped up my heart rate. Ew, Goose, don't tell anybody that. Don't tell anybody that you came to my house and I got your heart rate up, please. I think it's time for you to go. Oh, uh, are you taking off? Yep. Well, I suppose I should probably jog on down the road too then. Later somersault. That was so weird. You know what? I actually like don't know if he's straight. I think he's not at all. I think he's not even a little. Chief, buddy. I think he's like a dumbass. I think he's a real dumbass. And I think he's, I think he's gay as fuck, actually. <laughs> I think he's like slightly gay as fuck, actually. Good for you, Chief. Maybe... I, perhaps I was wrong about you, but I really am not sure at this moment in time. I just find it funny that you were doing, you were square dancing in the in the town square. So yeah, now I have to pick somebody else to do their home. I think I'm gonna do a couple off camera because I I, I think I just want to do them all. I think maybe possibly we'll see we'll, we'll see. I don't think I'm gonna get to all of them actually, but like I'll try. Uh, I meant to fucking tr oh. You know what? I also meant to like be cute and change my sweater, at least like a little to, to fucking anything. F fine. Fun goal. Fun goal it is. Even though I fucking hate Frank Gairo and think he should be in jail for the crimes he's committed against humanity, I'll be fun goal. Sure. That's a My Chemical Romance reference, all of it. Like if you are confused, you should be, honestly, unless you're in this pit with us, in which case, like I think that we all need an exorcism. And I was looking into exorcists, like I was looking into people who can do it. And there's like not a lot of people left in the world who can do exorcisms. I think we have to go through the Vatican, honestly. I think that there's only like a select few people who can help us at this point. This again is only directed at my Chemical Romance fans. I think that we need the help of the church at this point. I think that there's only, and don't bring up unholy verse. Please do not make any references to unholy verse in my comments section or else I am will report you to the FBI. Thank you. 
<laughs> I'm in here right now because I have a gift for Lily. I'm dressing everybody today, looking for drama here and there, you know, poking my head in where I can, but mostly just looking to live my truth as a budding interior decorator, interior designer. So who's next on the chopping block? I think it's Renee. No, Pierce. I think Pierce and then Renee. And then I think, yeah, I might like do some off camera. Probably not all of them by the time this video comes out, but like, here's the thing. Actually, I have a great idea. Some of them are gonna get done and then like we're gonna be at Turkey Day or like just randomly in a video and I'm gonna go into their house and it's gonna be totally different. How about that? That's cute. That's a good idea, actually. It's a great idea, in fact. But at one point, at some point, I'm gonna get all of them done. Now, I do want to note that Lily's house has always been quite perfect, but I'm still gonna change some shit in here, just not everything, you know? And I gave her that Argyle sweater because I just wanted to make her look just as, just slightly more gay. So, uh, mission accomplished. So, yeah, I think I'm going to do, I'll do Pierce. I'll do Pierce real quick. You know, y'all know the vision for Pierce. Pierce's thing, it's going to be, you know how his house right now is like a fucking mess, but it's like a himbo mess. It's like a very understandable himbo mess. It's going to be like, you know, before I was married versus after I was married to a bitch who has her life together. And uh, it's going to basically be as though Pom Pom went in and like redid the place because Pierce didn't care. He doesn't care. He wasn't attached to any of that. In fact, most of it is just his childhood bedroom furniture that he brought with him because he like didn't even consider the fact that he should possibly buy new furniture for his new place now that he's moved out and he's on his own. He like took his fucking car bed and shit from his childhood room because he's an idiot and he doesn't care again. He's not like that connected to it. And it's not like Pom Pom's gonna throw his childhood furniture away. She's gonna like, you know, give it back to his mother to like put into storage or whatever and save for their kids or something. I don't fucking know. I'm my bed. I mean, my childhood bed isn't something that I was like gripping to when I grew up. I, I had a beautiful beautiful gorgeous oh i'll never forget it thank you shout out to my mom for get, for getting this for me because i didn't pick it out for myself she picked it out for me this is like a rare instance where my mom got me something because she wanted it as a kid she was like projecting that onto me as her only daughter but it worked out so well it worked out perfectly and she got me a beautiful gorgeous pink canopy bed bitch yes mm -hmm. yeah that's right i really had a the, the the boss bitch bed and i loved everything about it like and the thing is is that before my mom had gotten it for me i didn't even know that that was like an option i had no idea that that even existed and then my mom like set it up for me and i like, walked in and i was like oh, what what is this what is going on here did you invent this what the hell it's got like a top and like the fucking drapes and shit it was beautiful and like, I just loved it so much. It was beautiful. And I like, but I did, I started getting kind of scared because like, I thought that like, I had this, like, I had a lot of imaginary friends growing up, like a lot, like my main imaginary friend. Did I ever tell you about my imaginary friends? <laughs> Have I ever gone into that? There's like a whole thing. My main imaginary friend was a dolphin. His name was Chris. I've talked about Chris before, surely. I have, right? And he was just like my, my best friend because I didn't have any friends. And I can't really explain to you why, like, I don't have an origin story for a dolphin named Chris. It, he just, he literally just appeared to me one day. And he would like, he was like floating in the air, you know, and he actually would wear like, so this is the weird part. Like he wore like a Miami's Dolphins hat and shirt because I just would see my dad like watching football and was like oh there's a team called the dolphins and like at the time i liked dolphins because i was like every other seven-year-old girl and i was like oh my god why aren't you rooting for the dolphins and he's like because we don't live in florida i was like i know but it's dolphins though <laughs> i think i might have just like when i created chris which again i don't have a memory of nor do i think i did i don't think that i sat there and said who's gonna be my imaginary friend and then like built him in my mind like a fucking like the fucking like create a character in the sims i don't think that that's what happened because i really do remember just one day like i could see him like do you guys remember having an imaginary friend where you could see you could like see them 
right? Like I could see this dolphin. He was like floating. He was huge. I mean, he was like the size of a real dolphin. He could float. He would swim through the air. So it was like the air was water and he would swim through the air and he had the hat and the t-shirt. It was like a jersey of the Miami Dolphins and a hat. And we hung out every day and he would like just play all of my favorite games with me. And he would basically just like be what I needed at the time. Like I would be like, hey, I'm fixing to like open up a bakery today. So like if you want to be like the co-proprietor of the, like my co-owner of this bakery, we could do that. And he's like, hell yeah, sure. I was so dramatic as a kid, as you can imagine. Like we'd have a situation in the town where there's like a killer on the loose or like somebody was kidnapped. You know, just like situation. I always love to have a situation. And so me and Chris would like investigate shit. My parents would remember me being like, talking in my room and they'd be like who are you talking to and I'm like I'm talking to Chris and they're like and at first they were like who and then obviously once I was like he's a dolphin he's right here like don't you see him (laughs) he's like literally right here with us at this current moment they'd be like oh yeah oh my god Chris hi I didn't even see I thought you were like a stuffed animal or something but like you're a real dolphin you don't need the water and he'd be like no no like I'm just like one of those dolphins that can like float in the air because like dolphins are mammals you know I don't actually need I don't breathe the water It's ridiculous. I actually do have to hold my breath, you know. I'm an obligate air breather. So, you know, like, obviously, I peep the blowhole, bitch. Like, this is actually ideal for me to be able to swim through the air. So, anyway, that was Chris. He was very real. And it's sad because, like, I don't really remember. I don't know. It's just, like, so sad growing up because one day you play with your imaginary friend for the last time, but you don't— I'm going to cry. I hate that. I fucking hate when people say, like, the thing with, <laughs> where they say, like, your parents held you for the last time. <laughs> I hate that. I hate that so much. Why did I bring it up? Why do I do this? I hate myself. Self-sabotage. Oh, I hate it. I hate myself. But, yeah, like, I guess I played with Chris for the last time at one point, and then the next day I just didn't play with him. However, I will say that as an adult, I, like, honor Chris's legacy. I really do. I honor him. I stand by the fact that he was real that he is real. And every once in a while, because I'm like that cheesy, I'm like that kind of like low-key insane, like I'm about to fucking snap at any at any given point, that every once in a while in my brain, again, this is orchestrated by me. Like I know I'm aware of what I'm doing. I know it's weird. And I know I don't have to be doing it. And I know that none of it is real. But every once in a while in my brain, I'll just be like, Chris, hey, I, I didn't forget you. And I'll just like acknowledge his presence because I watched Inside Out and will never forgive Riley for forgetting Bing Bong. That's why, like, oh my God, the first time I saw that movie, because I was an imaginary friend, bitch. And I haven't even told you about the imaginary friend that lived on top of the canopy. Like, there's another one. But um, Chris was my main, main, like, homie. And uh, so that's why I'm talking about this. Because, like, I want you to, to understand the level of imaginary friend bitch that I was. What was I going to say? Oh yeah, no, but when I first watched Inside Out, I was with Matt. When I first saw the the part with Bing Bong, like I don't want to spoil it, but like if you haven't seen Inside Out, just like, I don't know, I just like love that movie. Just watch it. Is that what it's called? It's called Inside Out, right? It's called, is it called Inside Out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that movie's kind of underrated, but at the same time, maybe it's overrated, <laughs> if that makes sense. I don't know. I just, that part with Bing Bong really hits, doesn't it? The part with Bing Bong ruined my life for so many reasons. And I remember I had to have Matt pause it. And I was like, make no mistake, I had told Matt about Chris, obviously. Because like, I run out of stories after some point. I got to tell people about Chris. And so Matt knew about Chris, but... I still had to like, I had to have him pause it, mostly for attention, just kidding. No, it really did hit me that like Riley was a snake ass bitch who forgot her be- her best friend, her bestie, her imaginary friend. I will never forget Chris. As long I'll be 99.9 years old on my deathbed like fucking Rose. And I will be thanking Chris. You know, I'll be thinking about Chris. I really will. He was there for me when no one else was. He is alive in my head. I love him and I will never ever let him fade like Riley did with Bing Bong. I really think that she was so fucking dirty for that, honestly. Like, why did she just forget like her best friend? I just don't understand that. I will never understand it as long as I live. That was a moment I really turned my back on Riley in Inside Out. is that she could just like like just turn it off like just forget bing bong as if like none of their memories took place i hate that 
a lot. So Chris is alive. He's real. He was real to me and he still is real. And I'm actually giving him a shout out right now. Thank you, Chris, for all the memories. Hey, Chris, you were my only friend. And I know this is belated, but I love you back. So that's Chris the dolphin. And then there was another imaginary friend. He was more of like an imaginary adversary though, I, I will say. <laughs> I don't I, I don't know if I could call him a friend. I think there was a lot of times where me and Chris were kind of like conspiring against him. Like Chris basically helped me to feel comfortable sleeping in my room by myself because I was scared at night because Icarus lived on the top of my canopy bed. Where the fuck did I hear about Icarus? Like that's obviously, as you know, like the Greek myth, I think of like the the guy who like builds a flying thing or he puts like wings on or something and he does it. He makes his like 12 year old son do it, Icarus or something, isn't it? And he like flies too close to the sun and then it melts the glue on his wings and he dies. Is that what it is? But did Icarus even like consent to doing that or did his dad make him? I feel like there was something there with the dad, right? Um, anyway, where the fuck did I hear about Icarus? I swear to God, I was like seven, seven years old. And I called this imaginary friend Icarus because he was a pterodactyl. And I guess I like saw something about Icarus on TV and I would go into my parents' room and that was always my reason for like, I can't sleep in my room tonight. <laughs> I need to sleep on the floor in your bedroom because Icarus, he's terrorizing me again. <laughs> They'd be like, Icarus, stop. Because he would like poke his head under. And listen, I love di dinosaurs. He was like going out of his way to just terrorize me. Like he would like poke his head under when I was like about to like fall asleep and I would be startled. And he had like this long beak, obviously, and the, like the long like like um, crest on top of his head. And he would like open his mouth and he would scream. And I'd be like, Icarus, stop. And um, he wouldn't stop. He never stopped. <laughs> He lived to terrorize me. Do y'all have these types of memories from when you were little? Like, I know it wasn't real, but like, it was real at that point to me. Like, he would terrorize me. You know, I'd run into my parents' room and I'd be like, <laughs> I saw Icarus again. <laughs> And so like, and you know, I wanted to be able to sleep in my own bed. I, I wanted that independence, but Icarus took it away from me. And Chris would always be like, Icarus, stop. The thing with Icarus <laughs> was that he was really lovely during the day. He was always like a buddy, he was a friend. And I was like, you know what? Icarus is not that bad. Like he, uh, there's nothing to fear. I don't have to be afraid of him he's fine. Like, cause during the day he would be like, oh, hello, you know, I'm Icarus. I live like on the canopy. And I'd be like, oh my God, like, why was I freaking out? He's he's fine. He's like literally fine. And then at night, like that's, I don't know if something changed in Icarus at night. You know, he just, he wasn't himself. <laughs> he would just like scare me at night. I don't know. And he would like fly around my room and shit. It was scary. <laughs> so that was Icarus. And I, I'm sure there was more, actually. I think there was definitely more. There was definitely more. There was Einstein the dog, which was my fake dog that I had. I don't know why I named him Einstein. Like, who did I, where did I hear about Einstein? I swear to God, I was six years old. Where was, I must have been watching. You know what I was, I was watching the Discovery Channel constantly. That's why I fucking knew all these fucking names. And I didn't grasp like the real gravity of them. I just thought, I don't know why I named the dog Einstein. But I, so for the longest time, I didn't have a dog. We got a dog when I was eight. And I begged, I mean, as soon as I found out about dogs and the fact that we didn't have one, and I think I've talked about this, I was like, why the fuck don't we have a dog? Uh, why? Y'all just don't want me to be happy? And my parents like, nope. <laughs> or like, I don't know. I was just like, just devastated and so angry that we did not have a dog. And of course, like f swiftly, I created an imaginary dog and the imaginary dog was Einstein and he was brown and he had a yellow collar. I will never forget that. And every day um, I would just tell my parents that I was like taking Einstein for a walk or like I was feeding Einstein. Like I would have to fill up like a cereal bowl of water and put it on the ground and be like, Einstein's water. Like <laughs> my parents would be like, okay. <laughs> Einstein's water. And it was funny because I always told my parents like that when I get a real dog, I was going to name him Einstein. But like when we got our real dog, I was eight and his name was Buddy. I think I've talked about Buddy before, but he was like, he was a German Shepherd and like he was the best dog ever. And I love him so much. He was my dream come true. Truly. I just, ugh, I'll cry. Anyway, when we finally got a dog, they were like, so like, do we have to name him Einstein? And I was like, no, I don't want to name him Einstein because like there already is an Einstein. Like Einstein's like real. <laughs> 
He's been real. Like he's been here all along. And then there was Olaby. Olaby was a frog and he was big and he would jump around and he was just like my pet frog. Where the fuck did I get the name Olaby? <laughs> It's so cute, right? Olaby? Actually, I should name a Neopet Olaby. Where the fuck did that come? Oh, I was talking about the canopy bed, but why? Oh, because the Pierce's car bed. Because the reason that I thought of my canopy bed instantly when I went to talk about Pierce's car bed was because my brother had a car bed. It was like a red car bed and it had like this big, huge, like, what the fuck is the thing on the back? of a car and it's like a just pointless like fin or something on the back. The fuck is that called? It's got a name. Is it a spoiler? Is that what it's called? Spoiler? That feels like what it's called. That's kind of stupid, but I think that's what it's called. Anyway, I had this big spoiler, but you could like push it up there and me and my brother would stand on it like it was a fucking stage. I don't think we were supposed to do that, but we did and it was awesome. But anyway, that's like the mark of childhood for me apparently. Anyway, that, those were my imaginary friends. I don't know that there's a lot I need to do on the outside. Maybe I'll like experiment with like shit like this, you know? Oh, that's cute. You know, just like a himbo house. A himbo house, you know, like a himbo enclosure, a himbo cage. But yeah, like the inside is literally like so classy, like too far too classy for Pierce. And that's like the point. Like you, you fucking know you know, bitch, that Pierce had nothing to do with that. That is like literally the point is like so obvious. Like it has to be like painfully obvious that Pierce, again, and I cannot stress this enough, had absolutely zero to do with any of this. So that's, that was the aesthetic that I was going for there. And I think I nailed it, honestly. And Tom Nook, to be honest, I'm, I'm not only am I done with Pierce's house, but I'm done with your shit too. So yeah, I really am so fucking done. Can you please stop following me from house to house to like monitor my creative process, please? I'm like begging you to just stop following me when I clearly know what I'm doing. I'm an expert at this point. I'm quite experienced at this point. Your services are not needed. They've never been needed. In fact, all right, we got two done. I think that I'm going to do a couple off camera and uh, then, yeah, we'll uh, we'll take a look. And I'm going to just do a quick, quick run through, just like check on Raymond, make sure he's not like hanging out with anybody that he's not supposed to, making sure he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Raymond, <gasps> and Pierce is here. You're just raring to go. So uh, what do you need, punk? I need to know, like, why you're such an amazing, amazing friend to our new resident Raymond. Like, why are you so sweet, you little fucking... Oh, I love you, Pierce. I love you so much. I can't believe he just, like, auto-filled my island one day back in 2020, probably, like, April of 2020. And he's been here ever since. And I gave him this football jersey. That's like kind of like a Chris jersey, honestly. You kind of look like Chris the Dolphin a little in that. Meanwhile, Raymond is wearing what he's wearing and it's horrific. When it's time to sit down and do some writing, what are you, like a writer? What are you, like a writer? There's nothing better than my den desk. Wondering what it is I'm writing. I was, yeah, I was, yeah. Holy shit, he's like a sentient being. I've had so many smug villagers and they've never said this to me. What the fuck? Wondering what it is I'm writing? I'll leave that to your imagination. You're writing One Direction fanfics on Wattpad. Like, what are you doing? Like, like I have read some shit, Raymond. I don't think you quite know how, like, chronically online I've been since I was 12 years old. And how how many, like, sectors of, of fan fiction and, like, just writing in general I've, I've been involved with and I've been exposed to. So when you say to leave that to my imagination, like, the, I don't think that you really want me to do that. I don't think you mean that. I truly really don't. I think that you're thinking that I'm like a, a like a New York Times bestsellers type of gal. Like like if Reese Witherspoon read it, then I'll I'll give it a, a whirl. I'll read it. I'll crack it open. That's not me. No, 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 no. I'm not reading that kind of stuff. I'm reading the kind of stuff that you would never want your name attached to. Okay. So please don't say that. <laughs> Do not say that. Looking for a rap session with Raymond, are you? What's the latest? Like, how's your fucking fanfic going about Pete Wentz and Mikey Way? How is it going? Like, wh do they did they live happily ever after, Raymond? You know, are you going to let them just be happy for once, please, without killing one of them off? That would be great, honestly. 
And please, for the love of God, do not title your Pete Key fan fiction bang the doldrums please don't do that or the summer of like like don't you don't think that you can pull your little fucking tricks okay because i've been there done that hey do me a favor go talk to pierce a little bit i want everyone to have a good time (laughs) raymond it's it's going well it's going great actually pierce is fine you know what pierce is gonna stand right in front of this thing this thing right here you could sit him in front of this and he'll watch it for two hours and have the time of his life okay raymond so i think you're you're doing just fine I love that Kyle is nowhere to be found. I love that. (gasps) Pom pom. I fucking love this girl. So she dropped Pierce off at Raymond's house to like see the new guy and like hang out with the new guy. And she's like, she, first of all, she goes, oh, you want to have a play date? You want to have a play date with a new friend? I'll drop you off at his house. But then she also goes, just like scope him out for me. Because if I did it, it would make it too obvious. But go in there, just scope him out. Make sure he's like safe for the community. Make sure he's like not like problematic. So she sent Pierce in, but she's working out in front of fucking Kyle's house because she's spying on him. And she's also intimidating him and making him aware that she is after him, that she's out for blood. But the only reason she hasn't killed him is because I asked her not to because I would rather keep him alive. Which, by the way, speaking of... Th- <sighs> come on dude why like why do this why do this in like the public gardens a place of beauty why do this don't wave to me you piece of shit i hate when he does that with his eyes i hate him i hate him i love him i love him i love him he's the greatest love of my life and i hate it i hate it at least Pom Pom will be there when he decides to slink on back home. Oh my God, Renee, I've been looking everywhere for you, bitch. I have this for you. I have an outfit for you. Cause you're like wearing your starter dress. And it's like, why? Because I've given you so many sickening looks. Like I just don't get it. Yes, bitch. It's gonna look great. Oh yes, bitch. The literal side of her head is shaved. I fucking love her. I love her. And now she's wearing that. Like, oh my God, she... What a woman, what a woman, you know? Oh my God, dude, like fuck me up. What? Fuck me up, Renee, <gasps> fuck me up. Please just walk by, just walk on by. Oh my God, what a woman. I can't believe it. Lily, you deserve this, you really do. <gasps> oh my God, yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah, she's such a like she they. She really is. I'm like the paparazzi with this bitch. Hey, hi, so I did a couple of houses off camera and by a couple of houses, I literally mean like these two. As you can see, Renee's not home right now. She's currently running around like a child, which is a beautiful thing. Honestly, like I'm not criticizing her for that. Do you need me to destroy that bird bath? Was that in your way? I love her. It's a beautiful thing to behold. It truly, truly, genuinely is. Lily, you hit the jackpot. Anyway, I did her house. I'm gonna have to like go in and out, like I guess until she's in it. But I also did Chief. I know that like we're not like keeping Chief, but I will say that uh, there was like some discourse in my Discord server that kind of like, it gave me a little bit of a change of heart where I think I'm gonna keep Chief for just a little bit longer. Shout out to Al when you said, Chief is not Jasper Hale. Chief is one of the gay cowboys from Brokeback Mountain. I simply can't be silent anymore. You awakened something in me because I love that movie. And so I just was like, oh my God, maybe this is my chance. to give them happiness, like to give one of them happiness. <laughs> and so I did this and I think I'm just gonna like lean into the cowboy thing. I think that's gonna be fun actually. <laughs> He's sleeping currently um, and I accidentally gave him something I was gonna give Raymond, but I really wanna, pl- again, play into the cowboy thing. That's why I have some of this shit, some previews of what I'm gonna give him. And I've given him some cowboy clothes and that is not what he's supposed to be wearing. But then again, I guess it works because he's he's a gay cowboy. So he's got a little fashion, but most of the time it's just this shit. You know, he's got like this like cowgirl Barbie. It's just like home on the range in here. And it's just, I love it. I think it came out perfect. And I, I, I'm leaning into this. I actually think it's just so cunt to have a thick Southern accent and you have like quarter horses that you, and you do barrel racing and shit and you have a cowboy hat. You have like a corn f- farm, like you grow corn for a living, you know, like that's like, that's actually kind of bitchy. That's like, you know, so I kind of love Chief now because he's got, again, the side bang, the eyeliner, he's wearing eyeliner and he's a cowboy. <laughs> so yeah, that's my whole world's kind of changed. Anyway, 
I have to, I guess, like time travel until Miss Renee is in her house because <laughs> y'all are gonna die when you see Renee's house. Like it is kind of my magnum opus, I won't lie. Pierce will not stop wearing this. It's a, <laughs> have y'all seen this yet? He wears this every fucking day. It's a custom coat in the shop that one of y'all put in there and it's cute as fuck. It's like a skirt and like a little button up shirt and a cardigan. <laughs> And Pierce picked it out and he said, this is cute. <laughs> so I'm, I am, not that I don't support this, but I do actually, like I'm trying to clothe these people again because I stopped doing it and they started wearing shit that I don't like. So I'm trying to clothe them again. I'm trying to like build up their um, wardrobe. Not that I, again, don't support Pierce in a little black skirt. This is throwing me off a little when I like walk in. But I think it's fine, right? Y'all remember this. Yeah, this is like Pom Pom. Pom Pom did that. Like this is her little station over here. It's cute. And like the little blue and pink toothbrush. Because that's like a thing. It's always like, oh, I have a toothbrush at his house now. So that's cute. I love it. I can't believe I'm actually like finally, finally moving people into Molokai for good. Not to say that Chief is here for good, but you never know. I kind of honestly love our little gay cowboy. I won't lie. Pom Pom, what are you wearing? It looks like a circus tent. Didn't I just give you something? I guess I didn't actually. Here's this. I don't know what it is, but that it's better than that circus tent that I probably gave you. Didn't I give that to her? And I was like, Ew. I have a like a small memory from like a year and a half ago of giving that to her and being like, whoops. I fucked her over. That's cute though, Pom. I got that at box lunch for you, girl. I love you. And then like the fucking bitchy glasses. Not the bitch shades, but they are equally bitchy and they're on at night. She wears her sunglasses at night and it's kind of ridiculous how badass that is. I didn't do Raymond's house yet, but I did accidentally give your gift to Chief. So I'm gonna have to go get something else for you. I'm sorry. Um, and you're wearing the thing despite having given you like so many shirts at this point, but it's whatever. I just want you to know that like you don't have a job, like you don't work at an office. So stop wearing that, please. Thank you. Hold on. Isn't Turkey Day just around the corner? Thought so. Normally I'm more interested in the after party than the party, but, <laughs> but with Turkey Day, I'm going to be the first cat in line for all that. Well, the after party for Turkey Day is like going to be you're going to want to be there. Let's just say that. You are really, really not going to want to miss it, Raymond. And I hope you won't. Truly hope you won't. Ew, Kyle's home. I do have like a shirt for him that I want him to put on because he will not stop wearing the tuxedo fucking thing. I gave him that for one day and that's like his favorite fucking article of clothing and I don't get it. He's fucking wearing it. <sighs> He's wearing it with his fucking aviators inside his house. Like Kyle. You're cringing me out, dude. You are fucking cringing me out. I don't, I'm not listening to a word you say, even though I really do miss you so much. But every day that you wear the tuxedo in like inappropriate situations, it grosses me out. And that's why I'm giving you a gift. It's nothing personal. It's truly just that seeing you wear this tuxedo every fucking day, it's ruining my life. It's, it's destroying my brain. I hate it. I don't want to see that tuxedo ever again. I don't. It's so ugly, Kyle. It's ugly to wear a tuxedo, a whole beautiful sh suit jacket with like a bow tie and like a little shirt underneath it and you like did all the buttons and like cufflinks and shit inside your fucking dwelling inside your house with sunglasses on like what have you become and now you're giving me a throwback wrestling figure you really think I like this I just don't understand I don't understand any of it it's heartbreaking it's uh, disorienting and I just hate it. Anka. And she's wearing, like, everybody is so fucking stuck on the outfits from Pom Pom's wedding, which was over a year ago. I give them so much to wear. And yet these outfits that I gave them over a year ago have them in a chokehold. And it's alarming. It is alarming. Pom Pom, work, bitch. I'm so proud of you. So fucking proud of you, girl. Anyway, I think I'm gonna go close up the game and then like reopen it until Renee is in her house because I'm telling you, you have got to see her house. Lily is a perfect example. I did give her this recently, this little like Argyle sweater. And I think she looks cute in it, but she cannot let go of the Jackie Kennedy hat. She can't let go. 
I don't know why. I don't know what that is with her. I think she's just, I think she's just one of those people who's like really fascinated by the Kennedys, I guess. But it's her little quirk and I kind of love it. I think she reads too much. Okay, I think Renee is home. So we're gonna go over to there and I'm gonna do Goose's house on a random whim. And then one day I'm gonna walk in and it's gonna be totally different. And you guys are gonna freak the fuck out. It's gonna be great. But Goose's house is still a fucking abysmal mess right now. However, Renee's, I mean, it's like the best thing I've ever done, I think. I think this is my best contribution to society in here, I think. I think it really is. I kind of sort of think I nailed it. I think I really projected what I want in life onto Renee, and I think that I nailed it. Yeah, I think I fucking nailed it. Sub Amanda, glad you swung by, punk. I still don't really know why I have an elegant lamp. It's because I gave it to you, Renee. Someone told me the extra light would make my place look bigger, but I'm not feeling it, punk. What? What? Are you like saying you don't like what I did with the place? Because why not? <laughs> this It's not good enough for you, Renee? Really, Renee, it's not good enough in here. It's not? Seriously? I mean, like you've got like this beautiful, gorgeous pet bird who is alive in this small cage. Don't ever, ever keep a bird like that ever. It's so cruel. Same with the large, beautiful emperor scorpion in here. Don't keep them like that. However, it's just a concept, you know, like it, the concept is that Renee had, has a pet scorpion and a pet bird, and it's cool. Why can't I see myself in the mirror? Is it because I'm a vampire? I'm a vampire, confirmed. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, I'm a vampire. Turns out I'm a vampire, you guys. I give her like this Mothman, like light up light. Two pictures of Lily. I mean, she's like, she's the luckiest girl on the island, honestly. Look at her dancing. And she's like, I'm not really feeling it. So, Yeah. Here I am doing that for everyone. I'm going to continue doing it. I mean, Chief's out here, like, he's being a part of the community. He's honestly, like, being a productive member of society. He's sweeping outside, Sumi style. But at least he's sweeping, like, the brick, I guess, like, the tiles. So, yeah, slowly but surely, I'm picking up the pieces of my life here in Molokai. I think the only houses I have left to do, to influence, to touch with my dirty little grubby hands is Raymond's gooses and ankas right is that it yeah yep mm -hmm. <gasps> speaking of raymond why do you ev every day you wear that even though i have beautiful clothes for you there's nothing like fall on molokai i'm just basking in it amanda <laughs> as you should raymond you ain't seen nothing yet let me just um just for the like just for the meme just so you guys can see raymond in something other than that fucking suit jacket that I aim to bury, that I aim to make him forget about completely and entirely. I just, I gotta put him in something else real quick and then we'll end the video. I just want you to look less like Tumblr Raymond, honestly. I don't know, again, it's better than nothing. It's not the best I can do, but it's better. I really aim to change this entire cat's personality so that he's unrecognizable. Anyway, uh, that's the video, so <laughs> I'm just gonna keep freaking out about the fact that Raymond's here and my whole island and my whole life is falling apart. <laughs>